Hi all. I had an interesting game last night playing away at Chingford Chess Club. I was playing Robin Oakley who's currently ECF 151. So um, there's quite a significant gap between ratings between me and him. I'm 188 at the moment. But nevertheless, um, I thought uh, Robin's quite good. Uh, in, in previous encounters I had a, a struggle uh, like in Blitz tournaments. And he had a little surprise weapon for me. Uh, I thought I was going into a normal French, but uh, he played the Haldane uh, system. So after e5 knight fd7 here, he played a very interesting, innovative move, queen h5, which I think Watson mentions in his Dangerous Weapons book. Um, I'm not sure he followed it up correctly, though. I attacked the queen now with g6, and maybe... You know, moving to G4 or even G5 would be um, better than um, going all the way back. He went all the way back with Queen D1. And, okay, White's weakened uh, me on the dark squares here. But um, his, his loss of development time means that I can strike out at D4 uh, in, in, in perhaps a more effective manner than usual. And in fact, after knight c6, he, he wanted to try and relieve the pressure on these two squares. So he, he's actually prepared to give up his light square bishop as well. So bishop b5, queen b6, he took on c6. I take back with a pawn to strengthen the centre. So here I, I thought I was fine and doing well out of the opening. And maybe the bishop can be, you know, potentially not that bad on a6. And he surprised me a bit with... Um, the next move, so d takes c5. Um, so he's following the kind of Nimzovician idea that you don't need to have your centre um, having pawns necessarily occupying the centre. You can sometimes capture away from the centre and, you know, maybe overprotect e5 later or just get a lot of pressure from pieces on these two squares. So I tried actually something quite interesting. Maybe I should have just taken back routinely. But I tried actually queen c7. I think the reason I'd, I'd seen this in the Gibraltar tournament, someone playing this, but um, I'm not sure it's that brilliant an idea. Um, because to put more pressure on e5, well, in the game required f6, and it seemed to create some weaknesses around my king for a moment. But as it so happens, um, quite often, you know, when I put games in for Ribka and there's any sign of weaknesses around my king, Ribka finds a really crushing continuation. And this is happening more and more. So it's like um, just, just any slight weaknesses, like uh, there, there might be a combination. Um, so we'll see that in this game, there, there was an amazing opportunity, uh, which I believe he missed. Um, so bishop a6, and it seems as though black's doing absolutely fine here. I'm cutting his king off from, from castling. And he was a bit annoyed to have to play knight e2. I, I, I felt he was um, tutting a bit after this uh, during the game, you know, just annoyed with his um, opening. But it's not so bad still at the moment. After bishop g7, he plays queen d2, which I think is quite a good move to sort of centralise the queen potentially on e5. And, you know, maintain a pin on the queen. And it did prompt a weakness coming up. Um, so after rook b8, he castled, letting that b2 pawn go. Uh, I, t I took it, and he plays rook f e1. And perhaps this is really quite dodgy. My king's still in the center. And I thought I could... S you know, snatch this pawn now. This might be an opportunity to snatch the pawn. So knight takes e5. However, after knight takes e5, bishop takes e5. Um, he played this move, queen e3. So he's strengthening his pressure on e5 and prompting me to reinforce e5, but with a weakening pawn move, which could have really just cost me the game instantly from this position. Uh, you know, maybe I should have just taken on f4 here, or just cancelled. But I played f6, and now he played bishop g3, as though he's going to be, you know, threatening f4. So that's a dangerous um, 
you know, threat because then if if the bishop moves, then e6 drops. So against that threat, I I played in this position. The bishop takes e2, but let's rewind now to this position with the bishop on f4. There's a highly tactical move, which Ribka found here. As I say, every game in recently in which there's a slight you know weaknesses around my king, my king's still in the centre here anyway. Ribka's often able to find fantastic resource against any such weakness. And I, I wonder if you can spot a highly clinical move from White, which he may have missed here. So if I give you five seconds to either stop the video or, or, or you know, if you can work it out in five seconds, you know, please do. So starting from now. Okay. In this particular position, it seems that knight d4, just sucking the bishop, would be crushing. So here's an example. Bishop takes check, and if the king moves to the 8, then knight takes c6 check, and I'd have to give up my queen. And if the king moved the other way, then just um, queen takes f6 check. And this is also kind of... Um, Devastating. At the very least, well, well, in this position, it's, it's devastating because of rookie eight. So if I have to put my queen in the way, then um, you know, queen takes h eight, or there's, there might even even be a technically stronger move. But that that that's sufficient to demonstrate a crush. So really, this could have been a tactical disaster uh, if he had played knight d four. So I think I was let off the hook here. And, you know, maybe um, because he was annoyed earlier about knight e2, he didn't, he seemed a bit disconnected from the resources that he had available after, because I think he was looking back at that, regretting it. So although bishop g3 seems to carry some of its own venom with the idea of f4, um, I, I'm still concerned, though, um, that, you know, after castles, Something like knight d4 might be dangerous. So what I do here is, is first take on e2. And to my absolute relief in this position, he didn't actually take with the rook. Uh, but looking at it with Rivka actually here in this position, it's not so bad for black. Um, because black has rook, rook b4 here. So if I can get the queens off, that rook and pawn ending will be fine. So let's have a look at this, for example, because here I've got king d7. So I, I main, maintain possession of the b-file. The king's protecting e6. The rook can come here to protect e6. And I think black's fine. The shattered pawns on the queen's side are really a problem, I think, here as well. So that would be absolutely fine. Uh, so I think he's, he's basically missed a killer resource earlier with knight d4. And now... Um, you know, I fought that rook e2 because the way he played it, queen takes e2. Really, I thought was letting me off the hook because now I can even just castle. And against f4, I've got bishop d4 check. So if this had happened, f4, bishop d4 check, giving me a chance to do something about the e6 pawn, you know, protecting it with a rook, for example. Um, there was another possibility... Highlighted, though, instead of routinely recapturing with the bishop, um, Dominic Allen on my team is about 195, um, suggested f4. And I said last night, well, maybe, you know, although this does, does appear quite troublesome, again, on the e6 pawn, if the bishop moves, uh, maybe, you know, I'm fine, actually. I checked with Ribka, and it apparently it is the case that black's fine after bishop c4 takes and now f5 so i'll be closing up that e file and again this 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 position is going to be sort of i think slightly better for black mainly because of these shattered pawns but here also the bishop's now hemmed in by its own pawn and if i can you know play a move like king d7 even and rook b8 then then that might be okay although queen h6 here may, maybe queen f7 first so there's still some dangers here, and maybe this would have been better than the game. So in the game, he'd routinely, you know, recaptured, but with what I thought was an inferior uh, way, he played, you know, queen takes e2. And all my problems seem to just disappear now. I just castled. 
noting that you know the rook would be act activated on f2, coordinating with this rook. So I'll be gaining another tempo in this variation after takes, takes, the queens come off, and now here's the tempo game: rook takes c2. So I'm threatening just rook here takes f2, and then at the very least mopping up these pawns. And if I want to draw, then I can take a draw in that position. But it will be a win winning rook and pawn ending, basically, once these pawns are mopped up. So um, he takes the time to play f3. But now I simply play king f7. And I don't mind about rook b1, which is played, because I, I just play rook e8 here. So I think I've extinguished his major threats. And actually, he resigned here. Um, he's going to lose another pawn. Rook b7 seems fairly harmless. Uh, if he doesn't exchange rooks, then you know I'll just either take one of these pawns 